Okay, before I start with uh, actual introduction to SAP uh, BW for HANA or BW, I would like to take a step back and uh, give you a complete picture on SAP itself. I'm not sure how familiar you are with SAP. Have you guys uh, watched any videos or um, did a bit of study on SAP? What is exactly SAP? What is ERP system? How it works? Do you have any idea about it? So what I am going to do is uh, give you a complete picture of um, actual core SAP. I'm not talking about BW or BW on HANA. So let's park it aside uh, our discussion on BW and BW HANA. I will tell you about SAP, why I'm telling you, I will tell you what's the reason for uh, walking you through about history of SAP and uh, complete background about SAP, okay? Uh, as you might be aware, SAP is a market leader in the ERP industry with regards to uh, ERP software, okay? Basically when SAP was, uh, introduced into, into the market or SAP launched their software, their idea was to uh, promote it as a accounting software, okay? They, they wanted to have uh, something to manage the finances. And, and then eventually they, they expanded their horizon and, uh, you know, introduced lots of additional functionalities to the application which they launched during early, 1970s okay so what is sap sap stands for systems applications and products in uh, data processing it's a acronym uh, is this and it's basically the name of the company as well it's a german based uh, company so uh, headquarters is in waldorf and uh, somewhere in 1972 they started uh, this company uh, this company was started by uh, you know, five ex IBM employees. Okay, they started with very small and then they grew uh, at a very fast pace and uh, now they are the biggest vendor with regards to ERB software in the market. So there was no concept of BW when they when they launched this software, okay. What was SAP, um, uh, you know, whole um, purpose was to, as I said, Initially, they started with uh, uh, finance, but then they expanded to complete ERP. Now let's understand, take a step back and understand what do you mean by ERP? ERP stands for enterprise. So basically it says that it's an application which can allow any big enterprise to manage all their resources and then plan accordingly to ensure that the optimal utilization of the resources is done okay so this particular software sap software is uh, i would say is having more than 65 percent of the market share in the erp segment and their product the latest product which is popular these days in in current scenario is uh, s4 hana it's an erp software of sap s slash four hana okay uh, so simple HANA version four, okay. Now, prior to that, the, the other previous popular versions were ECC and so these are different names of ERP application of SAP. What does ERP application do is ERP application allow you, so what does SAP ERP does? SAP ERP is, uh, application which performs suite of activities like it's an application to manage the various business aspects okay for instance in an organization you have lots of departments you have sales department you have procurement department you have finance you have hr you have logistics and so on so for each of those departments the business operations are different their business activities are different so the software should be capable to address all those business activities pertaining to those different departments of an organization. Usually what used to happen prior to that or uh, till recent years was for each of the department, 
if the organization is big they used to follow or adopt different different softwares even still today i have seen that lots of customers whom i have worked with like multinational companies have got more than 400 300 200 different applications okay and managing those many applications is a nightmare for uh, the it team to the cio of that organization it's, it's a it's a massive uh, task to handle those many applications but still in spite of sap in spite of um, you know uh, big applications like sap they still go for lots of small applications okay so the way they the organizations try to uh, handle their task is to simplify things by minimizing the number of applications they use and sap allows the organization to handle end to end operations of all the different various departments or or uh, you know functional areas of the business by using one single application so the beauty of this particular sap r3 application or ecc or s4 hana or sap erp application is that it allows you to you know manage the business operations of the entire organization using one single software having said that within one single software there are hundreds and thousands of features which are available just imagine like using ms office within ms office we have hundreds of features and still we might not be familiar with fully familiar with all the features or options of the ms office tool now imagine the activities which are being performed by a big multinational company you would have hundreds of features in each of those modules like within sales sd stand for sales and distribution mm stands for material management procurement logistics finance hcm human capital management which is hr okay crm customer relationship management for all those different business or functional areas you have hundreds of options within each of them and sap gives you an integrated view of the entire business using one single software that is your sap erp software it is tightly integrated you do a posting in finance that posting is also sometimes reflected in uh, you know procurement it is also sometimes reflected in sales okay so if someone is uh, um, making a payment to a vendor then it is the entry is updated in finance as well as uh, payments is through procurement so the procurement uh, section of uh, the software is also updated so what i am trying to say is there is referencing as well the data is linked so you don't have to duplicate the entries it is once you make an entry in one area wherever is the reference it will automatically update the values in the reference tables which means the data is consistent the data is you will not have any inconsistencies in the data because the data you are not maintaining manually you are not trying to go and update the same value at two different places or three different places in the software once you do it at one place wherever the reflection of that entry is needed in other areas of the software it will automatically reflect there so you have the referential integrity in database terminology okay the data is uh, the data is uh, automatically maintained in the sense automatically in the sense you do posting at one place then wherever the references are there at those reference points the data is automatically maintained okay so that is the beauty you you avoid all the mistakes costly mistakes of missing the entries or data inconsistencies by using this software as the software is completely integrated now this is s4 hana they have changed the name naming convention of the software uh, what do you say functional modules or functional areas in sap terminology as i said in a business terminology we had different departments to manage the different departments we had sub section of the software so the complete big software is sap within sap you have sub section of the software which is 
sales and distribution is one section procurement is another section hcm is another section so these sections of the software in sap terminology were called as functional areas or still called as functional areas or functional modules so sometimes you may hear that okay from which functional modules have you extracted the data or have you built the reports so the interviewer is asking you his intention is to understand in which business process you have worked in the past have you worked in building reports in sales and distribution or finance or hr or some other area of sap like plant maintenance production planning and so on so these are called as functional areas or functional modules now if we see sap is divided primarily into three major functional areas sd mm and uh, sorry logistics finance logistics and hr okay, these are the three basic primary areas of the software from that three major areas you have again sub areas of the software those sub areas could be like okay within logistics we have sd we have mm we have uh, procurement we have pp pm so these are the sub areas within logistics within finance you have uh, accounts receivable accounts payable we have um, uh, controlling product costing and so on so these are the sub areas within the finance domain so i am trying to make you familiarize with various terminologies which is used associated with the sap erp software okay first of all i want to highlight the different versions of sap software then i will um, i will then you know walk you through uh, about the different sub areas okay sub areas of uh, sap software i think uh, in the subsequent slides we do have in depth so we will cover that that's not an issue so what sap has done is rename the functional areas or functional modules which were uh, called as sdmm logistics so on in, with the introduction of s4 hana what it has done is it has renamed to core finance optimized order to cash so human resource foundation procure to pay is procurement okay plan to product is uh, i think um planning and accelerated plan to product is uh, planning and then enhanced request to service uh, so these are the you know newer terminologies which you would see when you extract data from s4 hana so uh, now before i uh, move further what i will do is i will just uh, to keep it uh, simple and make it easy what i am going to do is i am going to add one more slide and explain you what exactly um, so sap when in, sap introduced its software uh, we will go through the history of the software as well but uh, the popular erp software was sap r3 it's an erp software then the r3 had various versions there is a slide in uh, the subsequent slide which will talk about all these things then it is also called as ecc the the la later version of uh, r3 after i think uh, so it had lots of versions uh, i think uh, 4.6c or e i can't remember which one was it but after that uh, we have 4.7 i think sorry after 4.7 some version 4.7x i don't remember which one it 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 changed its erp naming to ecc ecc stands for enterprise okay why i'm why i'm talking about all these things is because in bw what we do is we have to sometime extract data from various systems we sometime extract data from uh, you know older older versions of the softwares as well so sometimes a few of the clients might still be on ecc you might need to extract data from sap ecc as well now the latest version which is uh, on a hana database is 
S4 HANA. Okay, this is the latest ERP software. Okay, we'll talk about all these things. So these are the three primary naming conventions which SAP adopted with regards to SAP ERP software. So uh, if you see about uh, SAP ERP software types, uh, I won't say software types, um, software versions. Okay, so the latest version in ERP space is S4 HANA. Okay, it's more visible. Now within within SAP ERP, within SAP ERP, we have subsections of the software. Actually, these sections are divided into three categories: finance, logistics, HR, human resource. Okay, so within finance, it has got again sub modules AR. Okay, we starts with FI, AP. So if I finance GL general ledger, general ledger, accounts payable and accounts receivable. So these were the these are the you know key sub areas and then controlling. So these are the uh, you know sub areas. What are these called as these sub areas in, in SAP terminology? These are also called as functional areas. So like FI. SD in logistics, we have sales and distribution, SD, uh, plant uh, production planning, plant maintenance, etc. So all these things, so these are called as functional areas or terminology wise, we call them as functional areas or functional modules. Okay, so example, someone might ask, what is the example of functional modules? SD, SD stands for sales and distribution, MM, okay. Then we have PM plant maintenance and so on. Now, these, these are called as functional areas or functional modules. Within SAP software, there are different uh, skill sets of people required because this software is so vast, so vast, one person is not sufficient to do all the tasks within the software. He will not be able to, you know, manage independently it is impossible there is no way even two three people is also impossible to manage such a big software because this is a very big software it is not like ms office or something which is managed by one individual person because typically when sap is uh, used by any client it is used by big multinational companies so within sap software to manage it there are three different uh, types of skill sets required. I'm not saying three different people, but typically three different types of skill sets. Okay. What are the skill sets which are required to manage these uh, such a vast software like SAP? Okay. What are the different skill sets required? As I said, these are the functional areas. So someone with the functional knowledge, so they understand the business knowledge. Uh, someone who has uh, prior background working in that particular domain. So they have the domain knowledge, someone from accounting background, like an accountant or chartered accountant or someone like, uh, you know, from the finance domain, they can, they can work in the finance module. They will have the background domain knowledge and they will also have SAP software knowledge as well. So these are called as functional consultants. Those in SAP world, I'm trying to, uh, you know, show you what are the different names of, uh, you know, people with different skills called as, okay? So someone who has got functional knowledge with the domain skills. So they will, functional consultants are those who have got the business domain knowledge. They interact with the business, uh, uh, business people uh, of the client and, and then, study the software, their existing software, a legacy system software, and then map it to the 2B process. So from as is to 2B mapping, they do it. So these are called as functional consultants who do these jobs. They have the domain knowledge and then they have SAP functional module skills, functional module knowledge as well. So they understand 
finance they also understand sap fi tool as well they understand hr they also understand uh, the sap hr options which are available in hr so those people who have got this skills are called as functional consultants now we have got another type of uh, skills in the technical side okay technical uh, consultants so within technical again i would say there are uh, two sub sections one is someone uh, okay within technical one is someone who has got the skill set to manage the software itself like a admin software administrator do you know uh, like uh, if you are using uh, in your wherever workplace there would be an it team it admin would have skills to manage the network settings he would have skills to manage the you know wifi settings he would have skills to uh, you know manage the user authorizations for enterprise port uh, for you know um, enterprise access okay likewise to someone who manages the sap software is called as a basis administrator so the job of the basis administrator is to install sap on a machine on a data data center machine or on a server and also also sometimes he manages the uh, along with the software managing the software patches and uh, software related task he will sometimes manage security as well otherwise in in some places basis is a different team and sap security is a different team so sap security is another team i would say who will access user authorizations roles and and manage the user privileges so this come under technical consultants and and then most important again uh, from the technical perspective is someone who has got abap skills so they are called as abap a baper is someone who has got a bap programming skills so sap has got its own programming language that programming language of sap okay, i don't want to confuse i just write it in the bracket advanced okay do you know when you use ms office you have option to customize ms office you can use vb script to to you know add add new options or new icons or new features to ms office uh, are you familiar so sap uh, microsoft allow you to edit the microsoft office if someone is familiar with writing vb script someone wants to write their own macros they use the vb script to write the macros in ms office likewise sap allows user to customize to customize the software okay what i'm trying to say here is sap is a packaged application even though it's a packaged application you can customize and uh, you know as per tailor need uh, you can customize it as per the customer requirement let's move on so uh, we are just you know i'm making you familiar just um, for you to be aware that being a bw consultant you will interact with all those different types of people in the organization now you may have a team of sab folks within your organization wherever you work in future maybe 20 people 30 people 40 people sometimes you might need to interact with these many people to understand their business requirement to understand what type of report they need to understand if you are building a cross functional report how the report should look like and 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 then to request access you will go to basis folks to write some uh, code you will need help of abapers so these are technical people who knows the programming and and they can they can do the coding to customize this software as per the business requirement so but probably you understand what is programming language right so these are the different languages which are there 
we we can use in 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 typically in, in the market these days but apart from that sap has got its own proprietary language it is called as abap so using that abap language you can customize the software with additional new features which are not available with the pre delivered software okay and who does that we need someone with those programming skills these these folks in the team are called as abappers so sometimes we might need help of abapper to customize something which is not standard okay so being the bw consultant we interact with all these different domains so we are we are here we are talking about people with sap r3 skills along with that we have other additional skill sets like bw and bpc skills resources who have got the knowledge of bw who can bring the data from various sources build the data models and create reports on top of it and in order to do this we as a bw consultant has to liaise with these many different resources in the team okay let's move on uh in today's uh, uh this is again jumping to a different area i don't want to invest too much so different trends we have in today's world with regards to bi data warehousing i want to park it aside i will come back to data warehouse definition later okay now let's move on to erp as i was saying what is erp erp enables the integration of business process and systems to achieve enterprise wide operational efficiency it improves the performance of a business by consolidating the operations of entire multi site enterprise into one database one application and one user interface if you can recall what i said few minutes ago i mentioned the same thing that erp software will allow you to consolidate the entire business processes by using a single application you don't have to have data in different databases you don't have to have data in various applications you can use single application to manage almost all your entire business operations major reason for adapting erp it can integrate financial information integrate customer order information it will standardize the processes and then the processes speed would increase it will reduce the inventory of uh, you know managing the multiple applications and it will standardize the hr information so these are the key benefits of using the erp software typically key benefits integrate the data you will have single source of truth because the entire data is managed in one application it will eliminate duplication of data increase productivity okay reduce operating cost these are the key benefits of using the erp software again a typical business how the business process for an organization would look like an organization would have its own employees assets inventory it might have its own customers vendors banks so a typical a, a very basic minimal uh, you know set of various aspects associated with any business is that any business would have its own employees its own assets inventory the business might have its own vendors and customers and and they might do banking so they might have you know its own bank accounts and so on what this erp software does is it can manage all those activities associated with the business let's move on to the same thing with regards to departments assume that there are different departments and each department has got you know various activities hr department okay sales department receivables manufacturing and so on we have seen that this software can manage all the departments so these are the examples of few functional modules in sap now let's move on to the brief history about erp software sap started in 72 they launched their first version of software called as r1 in 1973 but 
when they launched R2 in 1979, SAP actually picked up its uh, name. R2 was a mainframe based application. So SAP required a mainframe software, mainframe system to run SAP software. That was the second generation of software. It was, you know, R2. R stands for real time. So whatever you update, it reflects immediately in real time on the software. So first version was standalone. R2 was a mainframe based client server architecture. Okay. Then R3 was the most popular version. Uh, started in 19. No, I think uh, wrong. There is missing something. Okay. We are 92. So 92 SAP launched SAP R3. Then R3 had got lots of flavors. Actual, uh, I think 95, 96 onwards, SAP picked up its, uh, um, you know, uh, customer business of uh, uh, ERP software. And, and, and from there, it is uh, almost number one in the market. Various flavors we had uh, in R3, we have various releases 4.0B, 4.5B, 4.70, 4.6C, uh, 4.6B, and 4.70. So after 4.70, then uh, came ECC. Still, you might find lots of customers who are still on ECC. So when we extract the data, we might use SAP ECC software to connect to our BW system to extract the data. So this was a brief history of SAP. And, and then if we continue it further, after ECC, we have uh, from 2011 onwards, SAP launched its own database. It is called as HANA database. So based on the HANA, SAP released its own software or applications. S4 HANA is ERP software on HANA database. When was it launched? Somewhere in 2015. Okay. Then we have BW4 HANA as well, I think 2016 onwards. So this is now in-depth history about SAP ERP. We have seen that R1 with IBM systems, uh, servers with the DOS operating system. They had the financial accounting software. Okay. Then R2, we have mainframe based system. If you see here, we have mainframe based real time data processing system. Then with the R3, three tier architecture. Now we might have, uh, you might have heard so far, what is three tier architecture? Three tier architecture means, I believe there might be something here in the subsequent slide. We have seen the evolution of S4 HANA as well. R1, R2, R3. Here it's the three tier architecture. Okay. I'll park my discussion for three tier architecture for the uh, next couple of slides. We'll just quickly, just for uh, information purpose, I have added lots of uh, slides here to give you how the software uh, evolved over a period of time. Okay. There are few limitations as well uh, of ERP reporting. Okay, we'll talk about when we go for BW, we'll talk about what are the limitations of reporting, but we'll just move to three tier architecture. Okay, so R3 stands for real time, three stands for three tier architecture. And the three tier architecture is you have database layer. So the entire data of the application is residing in one database. Irrespective of the size and volume of the data, only one database software is managing the entire, you know, data set of the data of the organization. What happens is within SAP software, within SAP, okay, it has got three layers. One is database layer, one is business logic layer, which is uh, application layer, and the third one is the presentation layer. Okay, so what database layer does is it will manage the data using the RDBMS norms. 
relational database management system norms. So there are some dual code rules which are followed for managing the database by any RDBMS software. So for instance, the example of database softwares are SQL database, Oracle is a database, okay? Oracle database. Then within Oracle, there are various flavors of Oracle database, okay? That's most popular. Then SQL is another popular database. Obviously, uh, IBM has got its own database called as DB2 and, and so on. So there, there are lots of databases in the market. What SAP did was, SAP said that, okay, I give the option to client to manage their database themselves. So this software ERP didn't had any SAP ECC, didn't had any, uh, you know, restrictions with regards to database software, which can be used in conjunction with SAP ECC. So, so in, in background, in the background, along with the ECC software, you have to have one more database software installed on your database server, okay? So to manage the SAP application, we had three different servers. One server manages the database that is database server. Second one is application server. Third one is presentation server. So, all three together is part of SAP ECC, okay? What is the job of database server to manage the data? The entire data in SAP is stored in the form of tables. A table is a collection of rows and columns. So whatever data you have is actually eventually stored in the form of table within SAP software, okay? Then from that particular table, the data is flushed out and, and, and displayed in various formats using the application server. So the job of the application server is to, is to you know, display the data in different format using the, by applying the business logic in between. And, and then the end user, you and me, would access the software using either the SAP GUI graphical user interface, or these days we can access using a browser as well. You can access SAP using a browser or uh, in the previous uh, uh, version, we used to use the NetViewer portal. Now we are using the Fury apps in, in, in the latest version of SAP S4 HANA. We use something called as SAP Fury, F-I-O-R-I. -I. Okay. So using this, presentation layer, you actually access the software. So the third part is used to just access the software, application part to manage the application along with the business logic, business rules, language types, and so on. And database server is to manage the database. If you want to see more detailed uh, description about this three-tier architecture, database layer stores data, application layer process data using application logic, communicate with both the layers, read and write from the database whereas the presentation layer provides graphical screen, user enters data, requests data from database, stores and provides data. This is how the three tier architecture work. So you'll, you will, I mean, so like, you know, once we repeat it and once you start using it, you will understand uh, the software as well, eventually. And as part of our course curriculum, we will log into SAP S4 HANA and, and try to access some of the tables and access the data from there and try to load the data from S4 HANA into BW. So you will you will not only see BW system, but you will also see SAP S4 HANA system as well as part of our course. So I think uh, these are the few more details about presentation server, application server, and database server. You don't have to worry about uh, much now. One key point when I'm talking about database server is in S4 HANA, SAP has uh, introduced a new restriction with regards to database usage. SAP says that in S4 HANA software of SAP, the only database software which you can use is HANA database. And HANA is SAP's product. Prior to, prior to S4 HANA, user, 
users or businesses or vendors of SAP used to have, uh, sorry, customers of SAP used to have flexibility to use any database like Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server, IBM DB2, Siebel, Sybase, etc. Okay, any of the databases uh, customers were allowed to use it with. With the introduction of S4 HANA, you can use only HANA database. Likewise, in BW as well, the course which you are going to do is a BW system on a database. The database which BW system uses in BW for HANA is HANA database. HANA is SAP's own proprietary database. We will learn about what is HANA and so on in detail in our subsequent sessions. Okay, I think um, that is good enough for today. We'll just uh, okay. We'll we'll just yeah, do two more, two or three more slides, and then stop for today. Then we'll move on to actual what is data warehouse. So the way I wanted to uh, you know have the session is to give you a brief background about the associated ERP software which we have learned so far. Then in the subsequent sessions, we will learn what is a data warehouse. Then we will learn the previous version of data warehouse, which is SAP BW briefly about the uh, BW on non-HANA databases or prior versions of BW. And then eventually we'll move on to uh, actual content, which is BW with HANA database. Okay. so. A few more terminologies which you might need to be aware of or familiar with is you need to know what is client. Okay, client is a logical portion of SAP ERP system. So basically, when someone accesses the SAP system, SAP gave us a lot of flexibility to users. Uh, how I want to say is okay. Now, assume that you both are working in the same okay you both assume that both of you are working in the uh, james and ken both are working in the same company you have different requirements okay james is working in the finance and ken is working in the say procurement now but even though you are working in the different departments as i said it's an integrated software you make change in finance it, it would get reflected in procurement and uh, Ken is making changes in procurement, it might get reflected in finance. Now, what I'm trying to say here is, what SAP does is assume that both of you have a requirement to modify same object at the same time. You can't do it. There is an object locking concept in database terminology. Okay. Sometimes you are modifying something and uh, you don't want, say James is modifying something which James doesn't want anyone else to either see it at that moment in time or modify it because you are working on that object. So what you can do is you can use in SAP different clients. A client is a logical system in SAP. Okay, what it does, what do you mean by client is, is assume that I have this PowerPoint, I, I am using this PowerPoint. Now, if someone wants to edit, assume that this is in a SharePoint portal and someone wants to edit this say, same one in SharePoint, it is allowed. Assume that it was in network, network drive. Someone wants to edit it at the same time while I am using it, it is not possible. Whereas if you have uh, another version of the PowerPoint by opening a new presentation, you can work it. Now, what is happening is in, in PowerPoint, you have only one application, one software installed, but simultaneously you can open two instances of the PowerPoint and work on two different things simultaneously. If you want, you can open another instance of PowerPoint and you can work on something else here. Here you can work on say uh, BW and say in this one you are working on say not HANA, there we are working on ECC. Say you are working on SQL here, something like that. So assume that one software, one application, you can open multiple instances. 
just try to correlate that in sap also you can have multiple instances each instance is nothing but a client how many instances you can have from 000 to 999 almost 1000 instances of the application can be created okay in real time nobody does that it is too tedious to have that many instances imagine you open like sometimes i have a bad, very bad habit of uh, having like you know simultaneously opening like 20 different tabs imagine you open 1000 tabs you can but your system will slow down it would be very difficult to manage the software very difficult to navigate between one tab to another tab if you have that many tabs open likewise just for the sake of uh, scalability sap has given you option to have 1000 different instances of the application and you can work it uh, you know independently in different different clients imagine this is one ppt a powerpoint but you can open another instance and work something likewise imagine that there was client uh, say 100 for sql and uh, say client 200 for bw and say client 300 for something else we open three different instances likewise you can open 1000 different instances of the same application and work you know without any uh, without any dependency on the other client so you work on the one object which will not be disturbed by another one okay yeah. i am just deleting it okay now likewise sap also allows you to open multiple instances up to 1000 clients so a client is a logical entity of a, a sap system now there is there is a, a different aspect to sap software the different aspect here is sometimes some of the activities which you perform in the software because it has got one common database are you know shared activities which means that you make change in one place it will be reflected across all the clients so that activity is called as client independent activity which means that irrespective of the client in which you are working the change which you make will be reflected across the system okay and sometimes majority of the times when you make changes on the sap software using a particular client those changes will happen only in that particular client instance itself okay now this concept is not applicable to the bw system multiple clients in bw you can have only one client you cannot have multiple different instances of the bw software you can have only one client why because it's a consolidated database you don't want to have data scattered across multiple systems whereas in sap ecc you have a concept of multiple clients you will you will learn this uh, uh, when you actually see the software when you see it and there are couple of clients which you cannot use it you can use anything between 000 to 999 but there are three different clients which are reserved for basis activities or for system administration activities client 000 client 001 client 066 so these are like reserved clients meant for basis related activities sap system admin related activities okay you don't have to worry about all those things uh, because as i said in bw space we don't worry about clients because we have only single client now i think i will talk about landscape in the next session in detail and and then uh, we will move on to the uh, data warehouse okay 